Well, hello again. Here we are on the 13th day of the first month of Abib. And as you know, it is a miracle for me to get my better three quarters into a shot or a film clip. Here are the Eastern Red Buds. All of you want to see this every year because they bloom just before Passover. And last year, we had a 13th month before Abib. And as you all know, uh, they waited. And they always wait for Passover. I don't understand why, but we'll talk more about this in the clip and again we're narrating this on the 13th day tonight's the memorial meal and the focus of this study is being prepared we're going to do an etymological study on the word prepare and prepare from a scriptural standpoint and the focus on the 14th day preparation day of the first month of Abib all the way back to the beginning of time as it relates to the Mashiach Yahushua the first part of all creation as it relates to the father Yahuwah the only self-existent one and why he prepared his son for each and every one of us to do and carry out his will. So other than that, we thank all of the Bereans out there for the last year, for all the help on scriptural word studies, scriptural name studies, and scriptural law studies, which include the calendar. And other than that, anything else? Just uh, have a wonderful Passover. Excellent. So... Uh, we have our family here with us, our older boys here with his lovely wife and our granddaughter. So to you and your families, have a great Passover and on to the study. Hallelujah. Yes, welcome to another scriptural study. In fact, another scriptural word and astronomical calendar study in which we together as one will be studying scriptural words from an etymological standpoint as it relates to the sun, moon, and stars, the very first page of scripture, as it relates to our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, the only self-existent one, and his timing piece that hangs in the heavens. In this scriptural study, we will be doing a word study on the word prepare or prepared, and we'll be focusing on this word as it relates to preparation day, yes, the 14th day of the first month of Abib, which is known as the start of Passover in the evening. And the question is, does the world really prepare for Preparation Day? Does it recognize, does it respect Preparation Day, the 14th day of the first month of Abib? Does it honor it, just as the apostles or emissaries did, let alone just as our only teacher, the Mashiach Yahushua, did. What is so important about being prepared? So that is the focus on the scriptural study. And we start off with an exegesis approach, meaning allowing scripture to interpret scripture. Not me, not any woman, not any man. Again, scripture interprets scripture, line upon line, here little, there little. So as it relates to the scriptural word prepare or prepared from an etymological standpoint, what does the research show? So going to the scriptural passage from Mishli, meaning truth, now known as the book of Proverbs today in chapter 8, verses 26 through 30. And I quote, Before he, he being Yahuwah, the Almighty Father of lights, had made the earth and fields, or the first dust of the world, when he, Yahuwah the Father of lights, prepared the heavens, I, the firstborn son Yahushua, was there. Remember, our Father of lights was never born. He is self-existent, as per the scripture. Yahushua, the Mashiach, the Son, was brought forth. He's the firstborn of all creation. He is not self-existent. That is scripture, interpreting scripture, has nothing to do with me. So I'll read this again. When he, Father Yahuwah, prepared the heavens, I, the firstborn son Yahushua, was there. When he, the Father Yahuwah, decreed a vault on the face of the deep, when he, the Father of Yahuwah, set the clouds above, when he, Father Yahuwah, made the fountains of the deep strong, when he, Father Yahuwah, gave to the sea its limit, so that the waters would not transgress, his Father Yahuwah command. So, again, his command, Yahuwah's commands. Remember, 
The firstborn son of all creation stated that he followed what his father gave him. The firstborn son, Yahushua, never stated he did his own will. In fact, he stated over and over again he did his father's will. When he, Father Yahuwah, decreed the foundations of the earth, then I, the firstborn son, Yahushua, was beside him. Beside who? The Father Yahuwah, the only self-existent one. A master workman, and I, the firstborn son, Yahushua, was his delight. Whose delight? The Father's delight, Yahuwah, the only self-existent one. Day by day, rejoicing before him. Yahushua was rejoicing about his Father. Respect. Why? Because the Father prepared the Son to do his work. I repeat that again. Father Yahuwah, the only self-existent one, brought forth, prepared for us all, his Son, his firstborn of all creation, to do his will, just as we are to do the Father's will. Yahushua is the example. So as we get into this, we'll find out that the etymology on the word prepared from this very verse is used well over 200 times in Scripture. The theological word book of the Old Covenant states on page 433 in entry 964, these two letters, the uh, kaf and the nun, the palm and the seed, if you will, means established. and It's in English, kun, prepared, made ready, fixed, certain, right. Now it's going to be no coincidence that the entry before 964 is 963 and it's called kum. So when Yahuwah prepared the heavens, what did he prepare? Well, we can read this in Amos 5.8, Job 9.9, 38.31, and this is the heavens. And that entry, Kum, on page 432, the one prior to 964 Kum, for establishing and being prepared to fix, to make right, to make certain, was the sun, moon, and stars. So no coincidence if you allow Scripture to interpret Scripture. If we go further into a deep dive into the Paleo-Hebrew from Jeff A. Benner's Ancient Hebrew Lexicon of the Scriptures, these two letters, the pictograph kaf is a picture of the open palm. The nun is a seed, is a picture of a seed. Combine these mean opening of a seed. When Yahuwah prepared the heavens, he prepared his firstborn of all creation to be the one to be our only teacher, to help us call upon the Father. That's why Yahushua is named Yahushua. Shua means to cry out to the Father for your deliverance. Shua also is associated to salvation. If you allow Scripture to interpret Scripture. So, when the seed opens, the roots begin to inform or form the base of the plant by going down into the soil. The plant rises out of the ground, forming the stalk of the plant. So please stop the video now. We're going to go through a lot of information. If you don't have this particular book or others that we share, we have them all on PDF. Just email us at familyone at rogers.com and we'll share them with no obligation. We do not charge or ask for any type of donations, let alone financial. What we have been given freely, we are to return in like mind. So stop the video, look at the massive importance and strength of this word prepared with this root word, with these two letters, with the calf and the noon. If we go to the studylight.org app, again, confirms kun is the actual transliteration from Strong's entry 3559. It's a primitive root, it's a verb, it's an action. Love is an action. He prepared the heavens. Why? Well, the sun, moon, and stars are for timing. It's how we call out. It's how we worship Yahuwah on the right days. It's how we're prepared for Passover. It's all about preparation. It's about restoration. It's about being established to be prepared. And this comes from the Brown Driver Briggs 
um, lexicon as well. So as we get into this, read this. Stop the video now. Read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 26, verse 30. And read it, read it as it is in the proper context on who the Father is, let alone who the firstborn of all creation is. Very basic. We further read in chapter 8 of Mishle, meaning truth, verses 31 through 36, and I quote, Rejoicing in the world, his, earth, that's Yahuwah's earth, and my delights. The firstborn son, Yahushua, delights were the sons of men. Yes, we delight in the gift of the Mashiach, Yahushua, who was prepared in advance for all of us and further was prepared on the 14th day of the first month of Abib for something even more spectacular. We go on to read, And now listen to me, you children, for blessed are they who guard my ways. Now remember, Yahushua said, His ways are his Father's ways. Verse 33 continues, Listen to discipline and become wise and do not refuse it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, Baruch, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Yes, to enter into Passover. During the daytime period, before evening, we are to put the blood of Yahushua on our doorposts. Very symbolic in regards to the meaning of being prepared on the 14th day, preparation day, well in advance of the evening, starting Passover. For whoever finds me, who? The firstborn son, Yahushua, shall find life and obtain favor from Yahuwah the Father. But he who sins against Yahushua injures himself. All who hate Yahushua love death. So, very serious. And this is why we always share, please, please, be aware of the purpose of world religions and why we have to come out of the world, come out of her. Because Judaism rejected the Mashiach Yehushua. Christianity replaced the Mashiach Yehushua with a pagan Greek deity, Jesus Christos, a deity of healing. has nothing to do with scripture. Islam reduced the Mashiach Yehushua to a prophet named Isha, or some people pronounce it in Arabic, Isa. Very basic to explain. And the Hebrew Roots Movement revised the Mashiach Yahushua, shortened the name to Yahusha, and some even revised it further in greater error, saying the son's name is Yahu Yashe. It is what it is. We'll talk more about this as we go through the clip. So again, stop the video now. Are you prepared on the 14th day of the first month of Abib. Remember, Yahushua was with Yahuwah at the beginning of creation. He was the firstborn of creation at the beginning of time, of what we know as time. Remember, the Father of Lights is self-existent. He is not bound by time. Only His creation is. So this is what being prepared is all about, realizing these very basic kindergarten scriptural truths. So stop the video. Please take a look at this and read this again for those who wait at the posts of the door. For whoever finds the firstborn son, Yahushua, shall find life. Remember in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, what is the father's name and what is the son's name, if you know it? The way is hard-pressed. Very few are on that narrow path. So, again, do not be surprised that the word prepared is kun. It means established, prepared, made ready, made ready, created, fixed, to me certain, to be right, and sun, moon, and stars, the heavens. Very basic. And this is why we trust in you with all our heart and we don't lean on our own understanding. We trust scripture to interpret itself, not men and or women. And that's why we can go outside and film and photograph creation, what was created, given to us by Yahuwah from the beginning of time. It was prepared for us to number our days. 
And again, out of the trillions of uh, entities or stars in the heavens, uh, including the sun and moon, the apparent magnitude can be seen with the human eye unaided. Now think about that. Out of the trillions and trillions, the ones left in your scriptures are the ones that you can use day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. This is not a coincidence. And why the psalmist had stated, Yahuwah's witnesses are wonders, and why our being observes them as Bereans. So don't be surprised that Abib, this year, first day of the first month, it's the same sign as it was last year. And look at the dates. So this year, it is in the pagan month of April 23. Last year, it was after a 13th month, and it was in the pagan month of May 5th, as you can see right here. These visuals are from Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So again, we can measure this with our hands and fingers. We can observe it, shamar it with our eyes. Very basic. Well, the 14th day of the first month uh, of Abib, Passover, at the sixth hour, 3 p.m. our time, just as the historian Josephus had stated, in the month of, uh, regrettably, he called it Nisan. He was, let's just say, a little influenced to be sucked into that calendar system with Babylonian names. And he didn't use the word Abib, regrettably. He used Nisan. But he did note that um, the middle star, he knew that Aries was with the sun in the month of Abib. And as we can see last year, on the pagan day of May 19th, uh, these uh, shots are from Hebron. There we have it. Hamal is the middle star of the three-star cluster of Aries with the sun. If we fast forward to uh, what's going to happen here in the next uh, day, here it is again, Hamal, which is leading Seven Sisters, Pallades, and Orion. So again, allow Scripture to interpret Scripture even when it comes to the sun, moon, and stars, which are for days, years, and appointed times. And notice Spica below, well below the horizon. So if you combine these two, again, signs. If you lean on Yahuwah and trust uh, Yahuwah, not men and or women, including myself. So very basic, uh, we will keep this PDF in the description box of the YouTube channel and then three days and three nights later, uh, at the end of the 16th day, meaning the day has gone by, uh, the, we're into the fourth uh, night watch, and you'll notice that Hamal will rise. Speaker will be below the horizon. And welcome to uh, what Kef had stated, and we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the set apart mountain. And we have the prophetic word made more certain, which you do well to heed, as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Further clarified in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20, 20 through 23, but now Mashiach Yahushua has been raised from the dead, and he has become the first fruit of those heaven falling asleep. So Yahushua is the firstborn of all creation and he is also the first fruits of many more to come than those who are of Mashiach at his coming. For all as all die in Adam, so also all shall be made alive in Mashiach Yahushua, each in his own order, Mashiach the first fruits. He is risen. So if you get out on the pagan day of May twenty second, before the dawn, you will see Hamal and you will be able to photograph it. Speaker will be low. Welcome to the sign of first fruits. So we cover this in many scriptural study videos and here we are in 2024. So again, last year, pagan May 22nd. Again, Abib was on the heels of a 13th month back then in 2023. This year there was no 13th month. Uh, here we are. It's going to happen in the pagan day of May 10th. Again, if you allow Scripture to interpret Scripture, if you're following men and women, you'll come up with other options. And again, we are at peace with that. We made those mistakes. We didn't let go. We were trusting in our own understanding or some other men or some other women's understanding. Now we just trust Yahuwah with all our heart and we've let all that go. And there's a lot of peace to that 
as a result. So again, we're prepared for the 14th day of the first month of Abib. And as such, we know the three days and three nights, and we know when first fruits is. We're prepared just as Yahushua, the firstborn of all creation, was prepared for us all from the very beginning. That's what scripture shares. That's what we trust. It was established, prepared, and made ready. And again, when the Father Yahuwah prepared the heavens, the Mashiach Yahushua, his firstborn of all creation, was with him. Now, many don't take the time to do this very simple exercise. So if you're a Saturday Sabbath keeper today, do yourself a favor. Take Moshe's writings as we've done here and try to see if you can get a Saturday Sabbath. So as an example, the 15th day of the month is the festival of unleavened bread to Yahuwah. And Mashiach Yahushua said it was a high Sabbath. So try to get Saturday on the Gregorian calendar to match up to a 15th day scripturally. It will not work. Remember, the 14th day is preparation day, and in the evening, uh, Passover starts, and the reason the 15th day is a high Sabbath, Passover rolls into the festival of unleavened bread. And then count the rest of it out. Just use Moshe's writings to number your days, because the sun, moon, and stars verify what Moshe wrote about. Again, day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. Furthermore, we know that the meal that Mashiach Yahushua had it was with his emissaries, or had with his apostles, was on the 13th day in the evening. Well, how do we know this? Well, we go to Yahukinun, or the book of John, chapter 18, verses 27 through 28. Then Kepha again denied it, and immediately a cock crowed. Then they led Yahushua, the Mashiach, from Caiapha to the palace, and it was early. So it was the finishing of the 13th day. So the day period went by on the 13th day, and they're going through the four night watches, and now they're hitting the fourth watch. It was early, and they themselves did not go into the palace. Why? Lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. So Kepha would not go into the palace of Caiaphas because he did not want to be defiled. He was thinking he was still going to eat the Passover. So Kepha would have been forced because Mashiach Yehushua was murdered on the stake on the 14th day. He was prepared for us all from the beginning of time to carry out his father's will to be murdered and offered up uh, as atonement for one and all. But you have to be prepared you have to be prepared to recognize this. So again, very simple. If you allow scripture to interpret scripture, if you go with world religions and men and women's opinions, you'll be all over the board. So again, just before the 14th day started, so at the fourth watch, the cock crows three times at the dawn, Shikar or Bakar, and Kepha did not go into the palace. And we know the rest of the story. Mashiach Yahushua was tortured and then obviously, regrettably, and I shouldn't say regrettably, it was planned from the beginning of time. It was prepared from the beginning of time to be murdered on the stake on the 14th day of the first month of Abib. So three days and three nights later, they came to the tomb at the dawn, just as the 16th day was ending, and they came to the tomb three days and three nights. So pretty basic if you allow scripture to interpret scripture. And if this information interests you, please take the time to see these scriptural study videos, Abiding in, in Abib and Abishua 2023, The Lamb Rises After Three Days and Three Nights 2023. And again, you'll never ever celebrate a birthday ever again because think about it. The Gregorian system, which is... Um, has regrettably inherited the pagan birthday system from uh, Egypt. Remember, pharaohs invented birthdays, so we don't do birthdays anymore. But point I'm trying to make here is your birthday is never on the same day. Think about it. But if you go with the sun, moon, and stars, the day you entered earth, the day you were planned and prepared to enter earth has the same sign with it year after year. 
That's if you're prepared. If you're not prepared, you'll allow yourself to be dumbed down to accept what's on the Roman Catholic pagan Gregorian system. So that's what this video is about here. And all of these other scriptural study videos go into great depth uh, of about uh, of preparation day. Remember, Yahuwah, the name actually means I am he that is self-existent. I am that I am. So Yah Yahuwah, our father of lights, the only self-existent one, is not bound by time. And so this is why we call eternity past, or we identify this category as eternity past. There was no time. It was just eternity. He decided to create pre-existence. And what did he do? His first step? He created his firstborn of all creation, as we can read in Psalms 89, verse 27, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 through 36. Uh, the emissary Shaul in Colossians verified this in chapter 1, verses 15 through 16. And this is why, on the 14th day of the first month of Abib, he calls out to me, Mashiach Yehushua called out to his father, you are my father, my almighty one, and the rock of my deliverance. He cried out to his father for his deliverance. So again, Mishle or truth, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 26 through 30. Stop the video. Read about the beautiful story about being prepared in advance from the very beginning of time. Yes, Mashiach Yehushua was with the father during creation. We read further from a prophetic standpoint. Remember, the Mashiach Yahushua has already fulfilled uh, much prophecy, and he will fulfill more. We read in Yeshayahu, or Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 through 4, Who has believed our report? And to whom was the arm of Yahuwah revealed? Remember, the Mashiach Yahushua sits at the right hand of the Father, here and now. He is the arm of Yahuwah. He is doing the work on behalf of his father, he rejoices, as we have read already, for the father. Verse 2 goes on to state, For Yahushua grew up before Yahuwah the father as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. Do you remember the meaning of the word kun prepared? The palm, the right hand of the father, the seed, abib being prepared. I'll read this again in verse 2. For Yahushua grew up before Yahuwah the Father as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Yahushua has no form or splendor that we should look upon Yahushua, nor appearance that we should desire him. Despised and rejected by men, as we've already shared, every world religion rejects Yahushua. I repeat, despised and rejected by men, a man of pains and knowing sickness, Yahushua experienced all of this on our behalf. And as one from whom the face is hidden, being despised, and we did not consider him, truly Yahushua has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we reckoned him, the firstborn son Yahushua, stricken, smitten by the Almighty Father Yahuwah, and afflicted. And if we read the rest of the scriptures, we know why. Again, prophecy proves that Mashiach Yehushua is the firstborn of all creation. We read in Yeshiyahu chapter 53, verses 5 through 6 and verses 10 through 12. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed. Yehushua was crushed for our crookednesses. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. We all, like sheep, went astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way, and Yahuwah, the Father, has laid on him the crookedness of us all. But Yahuwah, the Father, was pleased to crush him. Who? The firstborn son, Yahushua. Yahuwah laid sickness on Yahushua. And when he made himself an offering for guilt, and this is what Yahuwah did, his firstborn son of all creation was prepared to be the ultimate offering, the only offering that could atone our sins. He would see a seed. You remember the open palm, the calf, the nun, the seed? 
he would see his seed. Yahuwah would see his firstborn of all creation prepared for us all at the beginning of time become a seed during a beeb. The firstborn of all creation, the first fruits. Yahuwah would prolong his days and the pleasure of Yahuwah the Father prosper in his, the son's Yahushua's hand. He would see the result, hand, the calf. He would see the result of the suffering of his life and be satisfied. Through his knowledge, my righteous servant, the son Yahushua makes many righteous and he bears their crookedness. Therefore I, Yahuwah, give Yahushua a portion among the great and he divides the spoil with the strong because he poured out his being unto death and he was counted with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many. Yes, Mashiach Yahushua was prepared at the beginning of time for one and all on the 14th day of the first month of Abib. Stop the video now. Study these two letters, these two wonderful letters out, the Kaf and the Nun, the open palm, the hand, the right arm of Yahuwah, and the seed. Take your time. We get further confirmation in the renewed covenant. The emissary Shaul states what? Well, in Ibram or Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, and I quote, for the Torah having a shadow of the good matters to come. So again, all those old offerings were only a foreshadowing of the Mashiach Yahushua, the firstborn of all creation, what was prepared from the beginning of time. It was a foreshadowing of good matters to come and not the image itself of the matters. So what does this mean? Well, it goes on to say, was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year. Well, what does that mean? Verse 20 states, uh, sorry, verse 2, otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered? Well, what are they talking about here? Because those who served once cleansed would have no more consciousness of sins. So this is why the offerings, the slaughter offerings, were done in the temple year after year. They were only a foreshadowing. They taught us how to be prepared and they taught us something else. If those slaughter offerings were not continual year by year, the consciousness of sins would be, if, would be forgotten. This is why slaughter offerings were done, to make each and every one of us realize our sinful nature. Verse 3 goes on to say, but in those offerings is a reminder of sins year after year, year by year. Verse 4, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So again, this was only a reminder of our sins. This was the purpose of the slaughter offerings. It was a foreshadowing of the only offering, Mashiach Yahushua, the first part of all creation, which could be the only offering offering that finally would do it. Therefore, coming into the world, he says, slaughtering, slaughtering and meal offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me from the beginning of time. Mashiach Yehushua was with the Father during the creation of the heavens and he knew the Father's plan and what his role was in that plan. He was being prepared from the very beginning of time to carry it out. Verse 6, and burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not delight. Verse 7, then I said, see, I come in the role of the book. It has been written concerning me. Who, Yahushua, to do your desire, O almighty Yahuwah, the Father of lights. Yahushua did not do his own desire. Read the book of Yahukanan or John chapter 17. He did his father's will. Verse 8, saying above, slaughter and meal offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire nor delighted in, which are offered according to the Torah. For the remembrance of sins, to prepare us in advance, to know what the purpose of Mashiach was, Yahushua, let alone the 14th day, the preparation day. Verse 9, then he said, see, I come to do your desire, O Almighty Yahuwah. He takes away the first to establish the second. The Torah and the slaughter offerings were established for a purpose 
but they've been taken away because the greater offering, the Mashiach Yehushua, has been accomplished. Hallelujah. Finally, verse 10, by that desire we have been set apart through the offering of the body of Yahushua Mashiach once and for all. So there's no need anymore to offer up any type of slaughter offering. You don't have to kill a lamb anymore because the offering of the body of Yahushua Mashiach once and for all has been accomplished. So we're planning on doing more of these scriptural studies as they relate to numbering our days as per Moshe's writings as verified with the sun, moon, and stars. And again, as verified for Passover, that's coming up like it did last year in the pagan day of May 19th. And this year it'll be on May 7th, Passover. And again, that is if you trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding or any men and or women's understanding. And here's first fruits again. Stop the video, or better yet, print them out. Remember, the scriptural and spiritual harvest cycle is aligned to the agricultural harvest cycle. Stop the video. Take a look at this. It's empirically, astronomically absolute. It doesn't change. The four divisions and the four days of remembrance are locked in the heavens that no man and or woman can manipulate. They can reject it. So this is why we don't reject it anymore. We believe in the four days of remembrance and our focus here today is, is a babe. And we continually believe in Hanok, chapter 72, verse 3, and the leader stars. And we follow those stars, which we can film and photograph. And we know the first day of the first month. And thus we know preparation day, the 14th day of the first month of Abib. And the history screams it out as well. So very basic. And a little point here and a, a note of thanks to Ray. It, it dawned on me after the past, especially the past three years, that farmers can help us become better fishers of men. Well, why? Allow me to read this email. Because I'm not a farmer. And it is due to the thanks and appreciation of people like Ray that I've learned so much about why the scriptural spiritual harvest cycle is aligned to the agricultural harvest cycle. Let's read what Ray had shared with me. Hello, Michael. Thank you for sending me the latest video on the start of Abib. I observed Yahuwah's perfect clock several times that night and witnessed myself for the first time the true head of the year. But with my limited photography skills, I don't have the quality pictures to share, hopefully next year. No worries on that, Ray, because what you're sharing with me in this next paragraph is immense. I continue reading. Last time, I shared how the barley and flax harvest were close to the start of Abib in the Exodus. And the book of Joshua 2 also confirms the flax harvest is close to Abib. The two spies were also hid under stalks of flax, which she laid in order on the roof. Joshua chapter 2, verse 9, or Yahushua. Why would stalks of flax be laid on a roof? Question mark. They would have cut the flax before it was fully mature and placed them on the roof top to dry. Then once fully mature, harvested at the threshing floor. This method would have prevented the most amount of shattering and or loss of the flax seed. We do this as well. Swath and the harvest once it's fully cured. Hopefully I said this word correctly, swath or swath. After this, the two sp spies fled to the mountain for three days and returned to the camp. Add another three days for preparing to cross the Jordan with the Ark of the Covenant, as per Yahushua chapter 3, verse 2. After they had crossed the Jordan, they camped at Gilgal on the 10th day of the first month, Yahushua chapter 4, verse 19, which of course is when the lamb is supposed to enter the house of offering on the 14th of the first month. Praise Yahuwah for his perfect timing, the flax and barley harvest for the first fruits. So I'm learning more about actual agricultural methods and why they do what they do now and why they did what they did in the past. Yes, farmers can help us become better fishers of men. So Ray, I thank you for this email and all of you folks out there that prepare in advance and that are working the fields uh, to this very day. Thank you for helping me become a better fisher of men. And this picture was from last year 
just before Abib again. And in 2023, we knew we had a 13th month just before Abib. And uh, again, the video footage at the start of this clip shows these eastern red buds uh, that point due east, 90 degrees east to be exact, are coming in bloom. And because I'm learning so much about the agricultural cycle, when the ground is frozen and when it's not, when to plant, when to harvest, when to reap, when to sow, on and on and on, I'm starting to understand the plant life within my own backyard. So uh, again, we keep these pictures year after year. Some people love to see these eastern red buds uh, in the past seven years bloom just before Passover, just like it's doing now, just like it did last year, even though there was a 13th month before the first month of Abib last year in 2023. Again, creation follows Moshe's writings. Creation follows what the sun, moon, and stars do to tell time, days, years, and appointed times. So many signs out there if we allow Yahuwah to lead us. But again, be aware of the purpose of world religions. Judaism rejected the Mashiach Yehushua, as we all know. We all know Christianity replaced Mashiach Yehushua with pagan deities. And they say Jesus Christ is the Father. The Father is Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Lord. It's a mess. They replace the firstborn of all creation. And in doing so, they don't even recognize why the Father is self-existent. Yahuwah means I am he that is self-existent. And as such, they deny the Mashiach Yahushua because they say he's the Father. Yes, the Father and Son are one. But again, Mashiach, the Elohim, the Almighty One, uh, is self-existent. Yes, Mashiach Yahushua is also Almighty. And if you know your scriptures, you have the opportunity to become Almighty, an Elohim in time as well, if you read the rest of the scriptures. But most people don't. They pick and choose. They trust men and women from world religions. Again, Islam reduced Mashiach Yahushua to a mere prophet known as Isha or Isa, as some people respond. And don't be surprised why Hebrew roots revised the Mashiach Yahushua's name to Yahusha. Again, Islam, Isha. It, it's not complicated. So when you look at this in greater detail, what comes to mind is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 through 18, and verses 22 through 24. And I quote, For the Messiah, Mashiach, Yahushua, did not send me to immerse. He's talking, uh, again, Shaul's talking here. Shaul didn't come to immerse. Shaul came to bring the good news that the Mashiach, Yahushua, is the firstborn of all creation, prepared for us from the beginning of time to carry out his Father's will, to be atonement for one and all on the 14th day of the first uh, month of Abib. And after three days and three nights, to become the first fruits of many more to come. That's the good news. And Shaul goes on to say, not with the wisdom of words that the stake of Mashiach Yahushua should not be nullified. Remember, world religions, everything I'm sharing right now from Scripture, the world thinks it's foolish. Everything we just shared. Moshe's writings, how to number your days, how the sun, moon, and stars verify that, and anyone can film and photograph it. The same signs year after year, uh, let alone the etymology. It's all foolishness. And this is why verse 18 says that. For the word of the stake is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing. Think about it. Three days and three nights. Catholicism says what? Friday to Sunday. You don't get three days and three nights. Then the, some of them say Wednesday to, <coughs> Wednesday to Sunday. Well, at the end of the day, Rome had a, an eight-day week. The first day of the week was Saturday. So, again, do your homework. That's all we can suggest, right? But to us who are being saved, it is the power of Yahuwah, the Almighty Father of lights. So it's the power of Yahuwah that creates salvation. Yahuwah is the only Savior. Mashiach Yahushua is carrying out his Father's will. He plays a role in that process. 
Verse 22 goes on to say, And since uh, Yahudim ask a sign, and Greeks seek wisdom, yet we proclaim Mashiach Yahushua impaled, murdered, to the Yahudim a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Yahudim and Greeks, Mashiach Yahushua, which is the power of Yahuwah, the Almighty Father of Lights, and the wisdom of Yahuwah, the Almighty Father of Lights. Mashiach Yahushua is the power. He is the kaf, he is the noon, he is prepared from the beginning of time. The kaf, the open palm, the right hand of the Father, the right arm, the seed, if you will, as we can see in a bead. So these scriptural study videos uh, all culminate to two things. Uh, if I had to state what I've learned in two separate things since we started this scriptural uh, YouTube channel, it is this. World religions are designed to ensure that you're not prepared in crying out to the Father for your deliverance. Every world religion makes darn sure that the Mashiach Yahushua and his teachings of crying out to the Father for the, you know your own deliverance is rejected. Don't do that. And then number two, change the calendar. Don't follow Moshe's writings, which are aligned to the sun, moon, and stars and the signs for each Sabbath day, each feast day. Don't even look at that. Eh, just do a monthly calendar with uh, an only new moon days. Just do that. Don't get into it day by day. Don't look at the signs for each Sabbath, let alone feast day, and so forth. It's amazing. Uh, forget about the moon, uh, just use the sun. Forget about the sun and just use the moon. It's three witnesses. So the two things, world religions want to ensure you don't cry out to the Father for your deliverance. And number two, stick to any calendar you want, just don't use the one in Scripture. That's it. So again, it's all about preparation. Stop the video now. Read this. The kun. Be prepared with the kaf and the seed. The nun. Mishle, chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. Rejoicing in the world, his earth, Yahuwah's earth, and my firstborn son, Yahushua, delights were with the sons of men. And it is my delight to be part of this, to share this with my family. And as we come upon Passover, share it with you and your family. And let's all wait at the posts of Yahushua's doors here. He is the gate. He is the truth, way, and life to the Father Yahuwah, who is the only Savior. So again, whoever finds the Mashiach Yahushua shall find life and attain favor from Yahuwah the Father. But he who sins against Yahushua injures himself. All who hate the Mashiach Yahushua love death. So what did the unprepared do on the preparation Passover day? You know, way back when, the 14th day, preparation day on the first month of Abib, when Mashiach Yahushua was murdered on the stake. What did the unprepared do on that preparation day once it was said and done? Well, the answer comes to us in Lucas chapter 23, verses 44 through 48. And it was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the dwelling place was torn in two. And crying out, Shua, with a loud voice, Yahushua said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And the captain, seeing what took place, praised the Almighty Father, Yahuwah, saying, Truly, this man, firstborn son of Yahushua, was righteous. And when all the crowds who had gathered to that sight saw the, what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. So when you beat your breasts, you're in huge crisis. You're in huge turmoil. You've realized you've made such a grievous mistake that is irreparable. It's massive. It's grievous fault. 
So this is why we are to prepare in advance so we are not placed in a, in a position to be at fault. Let's prepare now. And you've all heard the saying, life is short, eternity is forever. So we have a very short time in this life here and now to prepare because eternity is forever. So please, let's not be short-sighted. So, great visual. Thank you, Kenny. I seen this posted the other day and I decided to include it in this latest clip. So thank you for that. So, does the world prepare for Preparation Day on the 14th day of the first month of Abib? It does not. And that's the purpose of world religions is to ensure you're not prepared. Thus the answer to the question for this latest scriptural study video. As always, we continue to cry out to Yahuwah, our only Savior, our Father of lights, Yahuwah, the only self-existent one, that he continues to keep and guard each and every one of us. And may the Mashiach Yahushua, our only teacher, be in everything we say and do. Thank you to all the Bereans out there that continue to help us with these scriptural study videos. Have a awesome Passover, everyone. And if you're not prepared for the first Passover and you're on a long journey or you find yourself caught up, remember, learn about the second Passover because the compassion of Yahuwah is immense. We'll talk more about this, Yahuwah willing, in the next upcoming scriptural study videos. Again, have a awesome Passover, everyone.